Hello and welcome to the Social Marketing Academy. I'm your host, Christopher Pumpkins, but you knew that because you were listening to the show or watching us on our live stream. So uh, I have such a good guest today. I have Sophie Bowman. Um, she is a fellow social media expert. Um, she has lots of fresh takes on stuff. So I'm, I'm excited to have her answer your question. So I'll bring, I'll tell you a little bit more about Sophie in a minute. Um, uh, just to let you know, if you have missed any shows and you want to give us a little bit of a catch up, obviously you can subscribe, but you've done it already, right? Good for you. Um, you can check out uh, on gosalesandmarketing.com. We do have a podcast page. Check that out. Um, all of our past guests are going to be in there, our recordings, so you can see the video or you can listen to the audio, whatever you prefer. And also connect with these experts. The Social Marketing Academy is about me bringing my network to you so you can benefit from it. So if you have questions or ideas for a future show, please use the contact form or the chat function on gosalesandmarketing.com. Go sales and marketing. Um, go sales and marketing.com. Um, and let me know if you would like to be a guest or be considered, please feel free to um, pitch me there as well. All of that information gets to me eventually. So it's going to be filtered directly to me. So drop into my DMs. I'm all good. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's talk about a little bit about today. Social media marketing. I love talking about this. Obviously, I can talk about it all day long. Sophie, Bo Sophie is AKA the Brit. She's a Forbes published multi award winning social media entrepreneur and influencer who launched her first business online a decade ago. So um, she could travel the world and work from anywhere without pants. It's the Zoom. Um, let me grab let me grab her and bring her in for you. Um, uh, you're gonna, you guys sent some really great questions for Sophie. So I'm going to be very excited to talk to her and bam, there she is. What's up, Sophie? Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. I guess I kind of did uh, a little quick bio intro for you. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, what uh, what can you just uh, introduce yourself a little bit to the audience? Okay, so I have um, entrepreneurial ADHD. <laughs> yeah. My background, if you look at my resume, it's all over the place, um, which I was told very specifically I shouldn't do. Um, and it was going to make it very difficult for me to make it in any one specific area. Mm. But actually kind of having the last laugh because now, you know, like I think especially with COVID, companies are seeing that as an asset big time because I'm basically 10 people in one and that's just my multiple personalities you know <laughs> yeah absolutely I mean that's that it's it's I love that though especially if you're dealing with um if you're dealing with social stuff um mm -hmm. it's really nice to be able to be able to tap into all those personalities because exactly. sometimes, sometimes clients have pr trouble tapping into one um yes they do <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not reading you out there clients um, but uh, let's uh, let's let's go through. We got some really great questions um, from the audience for you, mm -hmm. so, so I want to kind of just I want to kind of run through them. And of course, anytime we talk, I'm going to go off on tangents. So you know, that's why. Oh, of course. Do I am. <laughs> um, so um, one number one question, and when I read this, I kind of rolled my eyes so, so hard that my contact popped out. The um, <laughs> why aren't I making sales via social media? Why? Ah, okay. So this is one of my favorite questions. Um, I get asked this a lot. My personal favorite is when people say, um, so I paid a marketing person, I paid a social media person to do my social media, and I haven't made any sales. And I don't understand what the problem is. I said, Okay, so when this person or you or whoever is doing these posts, is there a call to action? Do you have a sales funnel? Are you diverting these people somewhere? Because guess what? If you're not, you're not going to make sales. So true. It is. I mean, it's actually really, really kind of shocking. When I was in LA back in October, I realized like a lot of brands and we're talking big brands too, like the big daddies, not just, you know, small business owners are guilty of the exact same thing. Like That's they're not converting their followers. So that's why I can um, launch my other project last year, which is convertyourfollowers.com. Really simple branding. It does what it says on the box. Um, because, you know, if there was something, we had that situation last year where we were kind of worried for a while that, you know, TikTok might be banned in the US. Yeah. If that was to happen all of a sudden with Instagram, okay, you have a million followers um, is what I was saying to one of my clients on Instagram. But what happens if Instagram gets shut down tonight? What have you done 
to convert those followers. What data do you have for those followers? They were like, well, nothing. If it's gone, it's gone. I'm like, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. At the same time. Uh-huh, exactly. You know, it's, a, it's a, I think one point that I really want to point out there uh, that you that kind of like highlight is that big brands have the same problems as small brands 90% mm -hmm. of the time. And yep. it, it's kind of like, I, I had a I was having a conversation with um, another friend of mine, um, Janae, and we were talking about um, different, uh, the difference between multinational brands and small brands. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, well, you know, it'd be, sh it'd be shocking if I named some of the brands that I've worked with and what I was brought into as their back, back end management structure. Mm -hmm. And they were running that off of like an Excel spreadsheet an editorial calendar and or, like literally like oh. literally and, <laughs> and then kind of saying um yeah uh well um facebook doesn't work for us and i was like well, your website's shit you have no pop-ups and converting forms <laughs> there you go um, the copy's written way above the audience um the pictures are a low resolution it's not i'm, I'm i can keep going yeah you know, exactly why it's not working um <laughs> Converting your traffic is super important, and that's a, that's a very, very key point. Um, another one that um, people ask is, and I think it's a great one because I think everyone's right now, especially um, a lot of people are focusing on engagement more mm -hmm. as a metric. Um, how can I engage my followers more? That was another question. Ah, so again, that's one that I actually get a lot. Um, obviously, you know. I can go off on a slight tangent and say engagement for some reason is seems to be like the only metric that people look at is the likes per post and comments, which of course, you know, are important. But if you're not converting those people, I mean, they're literally like fucking voyeurs watching your life apart from, you know, uh -huh. occasionally lifting finger and hitting like or commenting or whatever, like they, they hold no value. Yep. So all this time, the small business owners, you know, are busy anyway, trying to do a million different things. And then they're doing the social media, usually themselves. Yep. Um, and you know, like that's just, it's not the be all and end all. You have to have a way to convert those so that you're now making sales. That's the, the, the very big <laughs> missing part that a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. They miss that. But in terms of engagement, I mean, there is kind of like when it comes to that, there's no one size fits all. It really a lot of it is trial and error. There are a few proven things that work, like obviously giveaways. Um, that's a huge one. You know, you have to be adding value into people's lives. So that comes down to obviously dependent on the brand and the industry and the like. You, their individual target um, audience. But, you know, in terms of engaging, you have to switch it up. You, it, you know, you have to think of yourself as like a performer that's entertaining them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like someone like Nike is a great example of how they engage people because they have a lot of video, they have a lot of, you know, interactive kind of stuff. And for me personally, maybe it's just my personal preference, but I like when people have fun with it. Yep. Um, and I think it's very evident, you know, like with, obviously I follow a lot of brands and I watch what everyone's doing a lot on social media. But for me, it's like instant turn off when people are just regurgitating the same kind of captions. Like if it's not even a funny photo, don't use the caption, caption this because no one gives a shit. <laughs> oh my That's God. probably one of yeah, the quickest totally. crash and burn as ever. Um, you know, it, it's bringing a bit of your personality into it. Like I really, I think it was probably the beginning of last year um in March I turned 36 and I was just like you know what I don't want to play it safe on social media and you know worry about a backlash um and whatever so I just really started being my usual sarcastic asshole self yeah <laughs> and as soon as I started doing that like everything just took off you know I was surprised because I thought brands wouldn't want to work with me if I'm kind of putting my natural persona into the post but they actually they love it they're like no everything just looks really authentic and you yes. do it in your own voice you don't see the so a lot of you asked about my hair care routine and uh this product is great i love it because <laughs> it conditions your hair and it also makes it shiny it like you're literally reading it off the back of a product and it doesn't fit with any of the other brand tone Totally. So that's a really important one is kind of, you know, I would always recommend to anyone, you don't necessarily have to pay someone to do it. But if you have, you know, like a branding strategy template, you can go through it all and really kind of nail down your tone of voice because 
followers, they will critique everything. I call them the citizens, the keyboard warrior citizens of social media. Like they will catch mm -hmm. anything and everything. You know, like I used to work for this dot com billionaire and I was a ghostwriter for her and I was always writing her blogs and, you know, her social media, everything. And then there was a point where I was actually wearing her shoes as well because we happened to be the same size and she has this beautiful big mansion in Miami. And then I kind of did a video of me walking outside into her garden, beautiful grounds, beautiful everything. And immediately someone commented, those aren't your feet. Like, <laughs> how do you know what her feet look like? But whatever, you know, they caught on to that real quick. So people can catch stuff like that. We found it hilarious, you know, no harm done. But um, yeah, I didn't get to dress up in her stuff anymore, which is very upsetting for me. <laughs> it, it's so true, right? I mean, uh, I, I, and the same thing with me too, because I always say to, um, when I'm talking to a client and I'm talking to you, I'm talking on the, I'm, I'm whatever, I have one speed and it's me. And that's the speed I'm on. I'm not going to... Like if I get on a call with a software company, I'm still going to like push the limits of my jokes. I'm going to literally on a client meeting, I told this to one of my, you'll enjoy this. Uh -huh. We were talking about um, <laughs> the client said something and I just thought I was really thrown off by it because they said that, oh, uh, we'll, we'll Facebook messenger this to you. And I was just like, I was just like, okay, just no nudes. And they they were just like <laughs> what and i said i said oh no sorry that was a joke uh i mean it's funny huh right right you like it okay we're gonna that didn't happen i love it yeah but some people that's the problem a lot of people have this really outdated belief that you have to be a certain way act a certain way dress a certain way yeah if you're in business and honestly if you look at the people that are a certain level they can do what they want because they've already proven themselves so it's normally like you know the kind of i wouldn't say amateurs because that's a little you know that sounds weird but the people that are kind of just starting out building their you know persona and their online presence are a lot more cautious of everything they say um or you know everything they wear whatever like I mean, it's a beautiful thing when you get to a point where you can do a meeting with like Forbes and you're not even wearing pants. It's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what? I think also I, I mean, it's the best. And I think that uh, the the one of the things, like even when we're talking about engagement, then we move on. The um, uh, being authentic really does help. And mm -hmm. but if you don't feel comfortable being authentic, you should really figure out how you can get in touch with yourself. Because exactly. uh, if you're a brand, like for example, if you're working on, if a brand, like I've been dealing, I've dealt with companies in the past that have given me their brand guidelines and they said, this is going to give me, this is going to give you the voice. And it's like, no, it's telling me that Arial 12 font is going to be what I need to use for your logo and your captions on your images. It's not telling me who you are. Exactly. And um, just because I'm going to do a yellow opaque background or a yellow opaque overlay on your images does not mean that I know who you are. Mm -hmm. And um, also being like being a little bit experimental, I think is, is a really good mm -hmm. way of tapping into that um but also a, like tapping into the use of an agency or a social media expert is really good too because yeah. we will tell you i mean i have no problem i literally have a meeting that's called the piranha meeting when we onboard and i have our team tear apart everything about the client not because we're trying to degrade them but we're trying to build them up so we yeah. have to look at the flaws and find them before their audience finds them exactly and that's the thing you know and that goes back to like the, you know, the keyboard warrior citizens of social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? They like, they pick up on absolutely everything. So, you know, there are certain things that don't make sense. Like, you know, brand values have to tie up with the kind of things you say, you know, if you're like a brand that's very much focused on helping female entrepreneurs, for example, it's kind of weird if you post a meme that's kind of disrespectful towards women, like that's not gonna, you know, unless you're posting it to ask people's advice on it, it, it doesn't make sense. Like everything has to flow together to a point where, you know, people visit your site or they just look at your um, homepage and they know instantly, okay, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've worked in branding and marketing for so long that when I launched um, convertyourfollowers.com, people were like, oh, that, that sounds kind of basic. We thought you were going to come up with some like, really cool like crazy name and blah 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 because back in the day i would have um but now it's at that point where it's like i just want to keep everything simple modern elegant stylish user-friendly and people know instantly what i do there's no question anymore 
Yeah, and that's and especially if you're if you're talking about converting traffic in general. Um, mm -hmm. it, having having the message don't don't like lodge your secret messaging that's just that you're uh -huh. messaging underneath a rib on page forty five of your website. <laughs> like it should be like above the fold, meaning uh -huh. the first screen you see. Exactly. Uh, so, okay, another question. How can I gain lots of followers without buying them? Well, I can do that. <laughs> You can actually. So uh, I have to, I'm terrible. I meant to, before this call, put the info on the site, but you know, I didn't have time today was a little crazy, but, um, I actually tried it out myself because, you know, I don't advise anyone to do anything until I've actually tried and tested some of, course, of my yeah, first, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so I did a contest, I guess it started last weekend before last. Um, I think the contest went for like two, three days. It was with nine other really, really big influencers. Um, the giveaway was pretty significant. I think it was like an iPhone, an Apple. I didn't really get in, into all that. I just sent the money. So I paid like $450, I think, but I got 12,000 real followers in the space of four days. Great. Um, and the drop off has actually been really good because a lot of the issue is we know with giveaways is afterwards, everyone just unfollows you. Yep. Um, like, fuck you. I didn't win. Delete, 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 yep. unfollow, yep. unfollow, unfollow. Um, but with, yeah, with this so far, so good. It's been a few days. I think I maybe dropped like 800 from that from 12,000. That's nothing. Um, that's nothing. Exactly. And that's, but you know, that's, um, the info I'll put the package up for that on my website and let you know when that's live because it really has to go through tried and tested people because this one is just happens to be a really good deal and a good friend of mine did it and she's you know a huge influencer with millions of followers so i trusted her and i went with her you know i probably would have done a lot more research if i was doing it just blindly but um there are certain people that have messaged me saying you know do you want to get x amount of followers it's um it was just under a thousand dollars to buy in and all the followers were in you know india or kazakhstan or whatever like that doesn't benefit anyone and we know that you're just buying fake followers and charging people a grand for the luxury of doing so so you know <laughs> you have yeah, to be also, careful yeah and also if you uh and like if you purchase followers in the past we know that you have Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good thing to say too, because if you have 45,000 fo uh, followers on Instagram and all of your posts have two engagements, you're a liar. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, people are getting really savvy with that. We have software now, we have certain websites like influence that, um, will say, you know, give the demographics, pull yeah. it all instantly, um, and tell people that. And, you know, theoretically for brands that are wanting to work with influencers, um, which can be hugely beneficial, um, you know, you need to make sure that their engagement rate is a minimum of like 3%, which isn't a lot, but you'd be surprised no. how many even superstars with like a hundred million people have less than 1% of that active. Um, and yeah, in terms of the fate ones, I have seen so many brands. That's another of my favorites. When a brand says we tried the whole influencer marketing thing, but it didn't work. Yep. Okay, so which influencers did you work with? They show me someone has 200,000 followers. They have like 100 likes per post and like two, three comments. Yeah, okay, so their followers are fake and you paid them to do nothing. Um, you know, you have to be smart with this stuff. It's all about picking the right influencer. It's then like building a long-term, you know, relationship. There was that uh, stats they brought out from years ago. So it's pretty very outdated now, but they still yeah. say something similar to people have to see something six, seven times before they buy. Right. Something yeah. like that. So, you know, yeah, doing one-off post with an influencer is not going to suddenly have everyone, you know, knocking your door down to buy your product. No, you have to be strategic. You have to work with them. It has to be, you know, an ongoing process, not just, you know, one post hit and run. Yeah. And it's, and it, I think also it's, it, it, you know, obviously it is a pain in the ass to deal with influencers. Yeah, so, you know, is. make it work, make it count. I mean, that's kind of how I feel. Um, it, you know, we have, we have, one of the things that we've come up with a lot of clients now are asking for influencer marketing, obviously, because it's mm -hmm. a hot topic um, and increasingly more so. Um, and it's kind of like, these are the influencers that we were thinking of. And they're just gorgeous people with over 10,000 followers. And it's kind of like, yeah, but is that right for your brand? Just because I think one of the things too is like a lot of people feel that being an influencer means that you're attractive. 
-hmm. And I think that that isn't the whole story that you should be telling. Um, because I mean, obviously attractiveness does so. Yeah. At the, I mean, you don't want someone that, you know, doesn't, that, that's not appealing because I'm a visual medium. Yeah. Okay, but cool. at the same time, I, like, I, I, I think another big red flag for me is when I look at their grid and they're like holding a different product and every, it's like, yeah. give me a break and don't bring your kids into this. But like, <laughs> And it's like, oh, I'm sick today. Here, hold this pencil. <laughs> or, or like, a, or like, like their three-year-old kid saying, like, like this flat tummy tea. It's like, what? Oh God, yeah, that's my, that's one of my pet peeves is seeing people just promote products, and it's like, you know, people just don't think. I'm like, who is, who's orchestrating this? Like, you know, my goddaughter, um, Mia, who's all over my social media a lot, she's 17. And sometimes, you know, she'll get some brands trying to send her stuff. And I'm like, eh, do they know that you're 17? Did they do the research? Yeah. Because a lot of it is just wildly inappropriate and just not, not right at all. Well, um, what I did was um, we had, we opened up, because um, I have a golden doodle and we opened up an Instagram cute. for Olive. And so anyway, adorable. Um, she's and, and find her. Uh, it's called Lady Olive Doodle because she's royalty. Oh, you know I am. I'm all about the dogs. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm like all day long. I'm gonna send you. Uh -huh. I'm gonna send you her her link. Um, but uh, she, she's so cute. Within 24 hours of sending that, we got 45 direct messages for product promotion companies. One wow. So I'm 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 thinking that they have some sort of algorithm that they bought. There's bots yeah. involved. I think it's all bots. So I think that a lot of the people that are targeting Mia are bots, obviously. Most probably. I mean, I noticed that a lot um, because if I post, you know, with certain hashtags like Miami influencer, uh, Miami blogger, anything like that, I'll get instant comments, uh, collab with us, DM us that, blah, blah, blah. First of all, if you want to collab with me, send me a message. Like I, I hate the whole bot thing, really. It really antagonizes me. Um, Brilliant. Or like, you know, my personal favorite, someone, a friend of mine posted like being at a funeral or something. And someone was like, oh, we love this post. Um, we'd love to offer a free cleaning. And I, I think I commented something and I was like, you're going to come and clean the area where I am because I'm on the fucking beach sitting on sand. Like you're going to come and vacuum the sand. I don't no, it doesn't work. So yeah, I yeah. called them out on it and they were really good, you know, like they were good sport about it. Um, but I was like, yeah, you can't do the bot thing. You just look like a idiot half the time. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of like, I think if you're doing, if you want to do influencer marketing, either understand that it's going to take a lot of time and it doesn't require a, mm -hmm. a healthy budget. Um, because I, it, it, don't go with the bot route. Um, actually find a specialist or exactly. you know, figure it out yourself. Um, yeah. there's, lots, there's lots of great tools, but I feel like it's, you really need to understand how marketing works in order to how to speak mm -hmm. with the individuals. Cause you're brokering deals. You're not yep. um, like, I've, I've worked with brands in the past. They're just like, here's an influencer um, where this looks good. And I was like, wait, we haven't even negotiated it. We haven't looked at, we haven't mm -hmm. run them through our system to check if they are actually, they do have that 3% engagement level. Yeah. We do the same thing. Um, 3% is like our go-to. Um, and it's like, I had one reach out to me. They had 16 million followers and they're wow. reaching out to us. And I looked at the rates and I was just like, I want your breakdown. Give me screenshots of your analytics on Instagram. Uh oh. 89% were in Japan. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Busted. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Sorry. Oh, they don't always do it. 48. <laughs> that, that's the thing. You know what? A lot of brands are still surprisingly not that savvy about like how to recognize you know the fake influences and it's exactly as you said you know some people literally just because you're hot or you've had a lot of you know surgical enhancements that made you hot like whatever whichever one it is that doesn't mean you're going to sell products like there's a there's a reason why people are following you it's it's not to see what you're selling apart from that you know what i mean exactly <laughs> like, exactly it's it, it, it it's uh it's interesting um especially like uh when I'll get, uh, I've had milk, I've, had, I've done lots of consulting with different mm -hmm. companies and, and um, the, the boss will show, he's like, he's like, what do you think about this influencer? And I was just like, I think you're enjoying looking for them too much. Like, I think that. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. 
<laughs> maybe like them too much. Okay, so um, another question for you is mm -hmm. how can you monetize your social media? There's multiple ways. I mean, obviously the kind of the most traditionally known one would be, you know, pay per post. Um, yeah whether that's with, you know, NDA, whatever. Um, there's obviously the affiliate links, you know, if you do fashion or certain products, then you can team up with someone like reward style or like to know it. Um, there's a lot of different ways. Uh, some people, you know, will build an Instagram account, for example, just to then sell it. Um, there's some that, you know, they'll create these meme accounts that do really, really well, get like 10 million followers, 20 million followers, and then they sell it for, you know, a million dollars. Like that's easy money right there. I mean, easy without the <laughs> 10 years work that went into yeah, it, right? but you know, overnight success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's so funny. Cause it's, uh, I, I think a lot of, a lot of clients that we work with kind of think that it's it's simplistic what we do in terms mm -hmm. of dealing with social. It's kind of like, oh, well, I have an account and I, and I post on it already. And it's like, well, that's great. Can you write content? Can you design things? Do you know what the algorithm is? Do you know your target audience? Exactly. Do you know what your insights are? Exactly. And I mean, I'll give it to Instagram. They definitely make it very difficult to kind of stay ahead of the game because they're just constantly changing that algorithm, that fiddly fucker. <laughs> yeah. And what's really interesting too is the, um, the, the Instagram algorithm Thank, thank God it's changed to the point where it is now, where it is, it's pretty much going into uh, utilizing, um, you get, you get favored if you're using every one of their tools. So I've been, I've been like, if you do, if you do a pay, if you do a post, you do a story, you do IGTV, you do reels, you do all that shit. Um, you're, you're, it works yeah. in your favor. So now it's great. I can go to mm -hmm. clients that are scared of video and say, let's do video. And it's kind of, it just helps them tell their story a yep. little bit more. Because the thing is that, I think one of the things with social media that I've really liked over the past year is that um, it's forcing you out, it's forcing companies out of their comfort zone um, in terms of yeah. what, what tools that they've been using because um, video is like, mm -hmm. for example, I, I mean, it was the first, it was in March and the first search I did as soon as everything shut down is how to create, <laughs> how to create um, video content without having video content. And I literally put that into Google <laughs> to, to figure out Perfect. how I'm going to do this, right? Because uh -huh. I'm telling your client like, oh yeah, we want need some video content. They're thinking like, let me call it, we can get Spielberg on the line. It's like, no, we don't, we don't need Spielberg. <laughs> We're not trying to do like Schindler's List. Like, you know, it, it, it's uh -huh. trying to create, um, just tell your story a little bit. And I think also it pushes people, yep. like, especially with TikTok, because I'm big on, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of it. I don't shove it down people's throats because you have to be willing mm -hmm. to be uncomfortable and some brands are yeah a little, a little stuffy for it um because we've had we did some really cute viral videos and our client was just like this doesn't look expensive enough it doesn't look produced enough and i said well this then that would be wow. for instagram this is tiktok and mm -hmm. really sitting down and kind of walking them through it. and they're like oh this is this is interesting so then we used it and it worked and then obviously everyone shuts up but uh it's 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 interesting yeah. to see um even brands asking about TikTok is just, it, it kind of blows my mind sometimes when I looked at the same industry like six months ago and just thinking that they would never. Yep. It's kind of like- And that's the funniest part, you know, uh, it's, it's crazy. Like the first thing that I posted on TikTok got like over 140,000 views um, just by using, I guess it was just lucky timing, um, but also, you know, the kind of hashtags that I use, but you know, that ended up winning me two, three awards last year. Um, nice. All based off that. Yeah. Because I did it as a joke for a local salon. It was basically me just being me. And, um, you know, I had to spend like, well, not had to, I chose to spend like a thousand dollars on hair extension. So I was like, okay, the British in me is going to make back that money by drinking a thousand dollars worth of wine. So they're like, well, jokes on you. Cause it's about $10 a bottle. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, bottles in my bag or whatever. Um, so obviously it had the salon and everything in the video. So they got such exposure from it. <laughs> it was crazy. Well, that's awesome. Um, it was okay, fun I, times. Yeah. I, I think it's kind of like, it, it, <laughs> it, and also on TikTok, I feel that it's, um, I think it's more, more is, is, is good. The more that you mm -hmm. post, more regularly you post, the more that you're going to be able to hack the algorithm a little bit. Because right now, exactly. you can definitely hack it. 
Um, it's just having enough content. And if you don't have enough ideas, then find someone who does TikTok stuff and they'll build you all the ideas that you need. Um, because even for my, for my client- I leave TikTok to my goddaughter, Mia Bella Mercury, because she has, you know, a really, she has almost 100,000 followers, I think, on TikTok. Jeez, mm. that's crazy. I'm like, uh, send it to my goddaughter. I'm not, you know, like I found a platform I'm comfortable with and I stick to that because I know it and I don't have the patience to do multiple accounts anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, not on my own stuff anyway, obviously. You know how it is. It's like the same with social media is like on the weekends and stuff, people are shocked that I never have my phone on me. I'm like, dude, I get paid all week. I'm on other people's account. I don't even want to see Instagram on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, or my, my favorite is that, oh, wow, I really like what you posted on Instagram. I really like that post. I really like that story. And I'm like, well, what did it say? And they were like, well, what do you mean? And I was like, I don't write any of that stuff. I mean, I have a team of people. We do this for like, they, like, they do it for me. I don't want yeah. to tell people what to do in these mediums all week long, like you said. The last oh. thing I want to do is finish at six o'clock and then start the doom scroll. I mean, I'm done. Oh, God, I don't want to look. I don't want to look. I, and, and the thing is, don't you feel like you're constantly critiquing everything? Yeah. I feel like I'm constantly, <laughs> I'm constantly judging. I'm constantly it's like, and then I'll be like sitting there and I'll be like talking to my husband. I'm like, I'm like, hey, take a look at this. You see this? There's too much text on this. So they, their advertisement's not going. I'm not going. Okay. And look at these. Uh, look, the, the emoji choice is absolutely incorrect. There's too many characters. Like, yeah. Dude, I'm like, oh, you? crash and burn. I'm out yeah. of here. Okay, how about I'm this? Um, let's, let's talk about mistakes. Um, so what mistakes do you find people make a lot on social? I think um, trying to jump on trends too late. So we saw, you know, <laughs> there was that very quick kind of outburst of the Bernie Sanders thing being Photoshopped. That was cool for like a day. I saw someone try and do it yesterday. I'm like, oh, honey, no. <laughs> no, 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 that was done whenever. Like it may have only been like a week ago, but still like if you're gonna do it, do it when it's hot or be one of, you know, the early adopters. Don't be the latecomer because you look like a dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's well, really it, it, I've, I've seen, I was, um, I was doing like a free consultation with somebody, they want a consultation and I was looking through their social media and they had the, the, um, the logo you know, when anything social, like social injustice, where there's something happening, they have the, they have the logo. Mm -hmm. It was the logo for Notre Dame burning down. And it was like, no, that burnt down like a while ago. And I was, and they're yeah. like, ah, well, you know, we, look, we, we, we kind of, we use that feature. And I was like, yeah, but you have to kind of keep it current. You can't use that all that, you can't just use something that happened three yeah. years ago and, and put that as your logo. Um, but no, it's, it's, help us all. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because it's like big brands and small brands. I mean, everyone has the common mistakes. They, they, they'll just get things completely wrong. It's like this. It, yep. It's, I'm sometimes like, I know how to build. I know how to run a business. So I know how to mm -hmm. do this. And it's not necessarily that case because I know talking to you, mm -hmm. we both have to wake up and we find our whole entire platforms change at eight o'clock in the yeah. morning. And then we have to change up everything that we're doing. Yep. And this is a, this is the power of working with a specialist or an agency. We're working on those things for you. So mm -hmm. I already, I mean, I knew months ago that with the um, changes in the, uh, the iOS, privacy mm -hmm. was going to really uh, adversely affect advertising. So yeah. I told that to clients and they were terrified and they were kind of, but then like, well, I'm not hearing anything about this. I'm like, yeah, but that's why you pay me yeah, because exactly. I'm going to be looking to the future for you. So mm -hmm. we can keep you um, competitive. We can keep you ahead of the pack. And like yep. stuff like that for us, even though it's a total pain in the ass, like a total pain. Mm -hmm. um, if we do that, our clients are going to succeed and all their competitors are gonna fail. And then that's gonna yep. be a win for them. Um, exactly. And that's really, I mean, if last year didn't teach us that you know, we always have to be one step ahead and not just be relying on one type of, you know, income, business, whatever, nothing will. Like, you know, there was someone I was speaking to at the end of last year who their business was a boutique. So everything was there. And I'm like, I mean, for me, I find that weird because I've always been very business minded that they didn't have an e-commerce presence. I'm like, 
that would have been a kind of no brainer. Yeah, you're busy with having your boutique and being there every day, but why wouldn't you have an online store so that anyone in the world can buy your stuff? I don't understand that. And there was someone, you know, that came to me in like December. I'm like, how do you still not have a website up? Like you've had this whole COVID thing since March. I don't understand. You can build it on Squarespace or you can build it on like GoDaddy. It's it's not rocket science. Here. Yeah. No, so, it's, yeah. It's, I think that, you know, um, this, I think the time that we, the last year, what last year kind of showed me was that people, when they have a little bit more bandwidth, can really be open to new ideas mm -hmm. um, because as a strategist, I have to constantly work outside the lines and, and yeah. ask for forgiveness instead of permission many times uh, yeah. um, in order to prove concept. And again, like I, I, I wouldn't do anything too dangerous. I always test dangerous stuff on myself, mm -hmm. um, on my own brand. But uh, it's, it's interesting that I think the video portion was the most uh, exciting, I think. For me mm -hmm. was that more people were open to that and open to have videos produced for them yeah um, definitely and i, I think that's a trend that's going to continue to grow this year because you know video is king like it, it's going to remain to be king for a while because now we have you know the next kind of level of jumanji on that is having um you know all this virtual reality that's going to be kicking in big time this year um you know, I'm in talks now. It's not something I can't like reveal details yet because it's so early and we're still building prototypes and stuff. But, you know, I'm already investing in a virtual reality project, shall we say. Um, so, you know, that's something that I feel like I should have been doing years ago. But, you know, it's still at that level where it's not quite so mainstream yet. But I think in the next couple of years, it will be. So I think, I think so. that's going to be fun. I think so too. Well, I think I, I'm definitely with you. I'm like a super Oculus mm -hmm. fan, um, and it's it's a, it's it, it's it's kind of like kind of like off on a tangent. Um, the VR space is totally different than you think it is. Yep. Um, it's totally different. I mean, mm -hmm. even like for me, kind of getting an Oculus two, taking a look at it because it's kind of I was obviously very reluctant because it ties to Facebook and it makes me think of work. <laughs> but um and facebook is probably my least favorite platform to work with because they're the most non they're the most non yep. um and i mean come on I, just to kind of commiserate how many times have i been on a client call where they're blaming me for something that facebook did to them and it, 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 it yep. happens all the time it does all the time all the time and to be honest with you like i'm you know i sometimes use facebook now just mainly it's just to keep in touch with friends or whoever back in london but i mean me personally i never do ads on it and stuff because it's just it has no value you know the same with um instagram if you're not a brand that can afford to spend you know five to ten thousand dollars a month you're just not going to see results um, yeah. that's just my personal experience. You might get a few here and there, but you know, unless it's like, you know, a fashion brand that everyone wants to buy from, you know, fashion Nova, if they did adverts still, I don't know if they still do. I'm sure they do. Um, you know, they probably see really good, uh, results with that because they're so well known. Whereas, you know, like some old clients I used to work with a long time ago, some lawyers, um, they could afford to spend, you know, 10 grand a month because each client is equal to them to about an average of like 80 grand. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I think, it, I think my usual rule of thumb is if you are going to do anything on Facebook, you have to have an advertising budget. And if you do not have an yeah. advertising budget, I usually suggest another platform Yeah, because we'll have clients that are just, they, they might be, um, um, risk adverse in the short short term of the mm -hmm. campaign and maybe phase two they want to go into a more aggressive advertising push yeah and i will always say them let's introduce facebook at that stage because um none of your shit's going to be seen no one's going to say anything and you're going to yep. call you're going to call me up and say why is only two people looking at my post and i'm, I'm going to say well facebook doesn't want anybody to see it um yep. sorry uh but so I had such a good time talking to you. Um, good, good info. Where can I'm gonna? I'll, I'll put your links in, in the um, mm -hmm. description of the show on the podcast and video. But where can people learn more about you? Uh, to be honest, like I mainly use Instagram, so that's at Sophie C for Claire Bowman. Um, and then you can always drop by on convertyourfollowers.com. Drop me an email. 
come and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, folks, do that. She knows her shit. Um, Sophie is excellent. So do look it up. Go to the website. Um, uh, folks, we have some really great uh, episodes coming up. We have some PR specialists on the doc cats. So get ready for that. That's going to be thrilling. So shoot over some questions for me. Um, again, go to gosalesandmarketing.com. Gosalesandmarketing.com. Look, I said that twice so you remember it. Um, go to the website, check out our blog. We have a free e-course right now. There's stuff for you there, right? So go. And also, if you have any questions for me, slip into my DMs. And you could actually um, contact us directly through the website as well. I get everything. It all gets filtered to me. So um, folks, again, Sophie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for uh, having me. Yeah, no problem. Like We'll have you back again for sure. Um, and uh, folks, until next time, Social Marketing Academy, take care of yourself. <laughs>